Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Hey, baby, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, very good. It is October. For those of you uh, who were with us last week, it was September. Now, it's October. How did that happen? I mean... <laughs> It's October. This this year is dang near done. I don't know how that happened. Coming up later in the program, we're going to talk with Dr. Bill Miller about vaccines. He's got a book called The Microcosm Within, and, and I've talked to him in the past. Uh, super smart guy, and I'm looking forward to chatting with him today to get caught up about vaccines. Take a listen to this. Research study shows eating too much red meat may produce just as much cancer as smoking. Great. I like red meat. Yeah, but we don't eat red meat every single day. So, so do I need to give up red meat now? No, I said eating too much red mm, meat. T- how much is too much? It's Everything probably, in moderation is If fine. you look at what I eat, that's too much. <laughs> Some airlines are now starting to sell advertising space on their air sickness barf bags. Who would be the perfect candidate? I'm sorry, I didn't. Did I say candidate? Who would be the perfect advertiser for a barf bag? Oh, maybe I was right in the first place. Candidate. Uh, what about motion for... sickness pills? Oh, there you go. Hey, see, no, that's a good idea. I didn't even think of that. I was being a wise guy. <laughs> Come along with or all this. Or Pepto Bismol, something to soothe the tummy, or Come along with like all this that. common sense, Heidi. Which Thanks would be a lot. available for, through your in flight oh, magazine. Man. <laughs> Business plan. Let's get it done and go on Shark Tank. <laughs> Coming up later this month, I'll be visiting with Robert Hershevek from Shark Tank. It's next Wednesday. I'm so excited about that. Coming up right now, we've got some special things happening today. We'll tell you all about it after this. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Monday. It's October the 3rd. I still cannot get over the fact that it's October. Child Health Day today. That is important. Oh, healthy children is yeah. If you've got healthy children, you know you are so fortunate. For those of you that don't, we pray for you because boy, having a kiddo that's not feeling well is just not fun. No, no matter oh what it gosh, is. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. Today is also Day of Unity. How wonderful it would it be if we could all just unify and all be on the same team? <laughs> so today, I'm not going to make any political posts on Facebook. We're going to try to unify, if not for just a day, and I'm going to encourage others to do that as well. Uh, go on there. If you're on one side of the aisle, just love people on the other side of the aisle. Today is the day of unity. We'll get back to hating each other tomorrow. It's Techies Day today. It's World Day of Architecture, World Day of Bullying Prevention. Go back to my comments earlier and apply those again. It is also World Habitat Day and Blue Shirt Day. And for some reason, that's in parentheses. What is that in parentheses? I have no clue. It's in parentheses Blue Shirt Day today. So get out and celebrate. Legally, we gotta have insurance. That's why getting the very best rate is paramount. I'm Jared Parsons. I founded the first national and virtual insurance agency. Until now, you were limited to the agents in your area. But what if the rates are better somewhere else? At Parsons, we shop around and we get you the best rate. It's that simple. Go to RadioInsuranceGuy.com. That's RadioInsuranceGuy.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. You think your job stinks? (laughs) Try this one. Researchers at a Canadian university have recruited six people. I held my fingers up while saying that. Yeah, it doesn't really translate. Didn't translate. Six people to sniff pig manure. Yeah. Oh, why? Uh, They're working on this in Alberta, trying to find out how close pig barns could be built to where humans reside. Like, how close... Uh before proximity. So these manure sniffers met three times a week for two-hour sessions. They were paid 10 bucks an hour, so hey, I'm mocking them, and they're the ones making money on this. 10 bucks an hour to sniff. They were chosen after passing a rigorous test to show that they could smell properly. So imagine what that test is. Yeah, I wonder, I mean... <laughs> I don't know. You would not pass that test, by the way. Yes, I would. You, to smell things properly? I smell things just no, fine. No, you do not. You wouldn't be married to me if you did. <laughs> Pretty sure your sniffer doesn't work at all. Another university will be conducting a test to see how far away you want to be from people who spent the last two hours sniffing manure, I think. I'm pretty sure. In a related story, the ham is anything but heavenly in Stewart, Florida. These days, two pig farmers in Florida at a golf resort are going to court because the golf resort is suing the owners of the neighboring pig farms for disrupting their multi-million dollar investment by playing loud country music for their pigs. Oh, 
Oh, man. So for them, it has nothing to do with the smell coming from the pigs. It's all the loud music, along with the fact that there is a, a little bit of an unreasonable scent in the air, is what they say. I could see that at a country club. I mean, if people are coming there to play golf and they're supposed to be outdoor, I could, I could see that. Well, ac- that would be... According to the attorney for the country club, they say there's unreasonable... Uh, unreasonable sounds and scents, and it disturbs the Florida golf yeah, club golfers and homeowners from using their property properly. So we'll see what happens there. All I know is they should talk to the folks in Canada and see if they can help them uh, finish this study, and then everybody can work together in harmony. It is Unity Day today. You know, <laughs> All right. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. A recent study suggests that adolescents who regularly smoke marijuana run a risk of damaging a portion of their brain associated with language development. Brain scans revealed microscopic abnormalities in a region of the brain that controls higher aspects of language. Did you notice how many big words they put in that story? Yeah, quite a few. <laughs> I had I practiced that like eight times because I didn't want to slur my way through it and have everybody think I was stoned right now. So <laughs> that's not the case. I don't do that. But uh, again, this study says if you're a youngster and you smoke marijuana, you risk damaging a portion of your brain associated with speech and being able to speak clearly. This explains why a lot of people that we are, that we know of that are like the typical stoner kind of sound the same way. They're like, yeah, man. You, you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, if you watch a movie and they have a character that's supposed to be a stoner, they always sound yeah. kind of the same. Yeah. It's because of this. This study is like right on. So I don't know how this got uh, wiggled into my brain on drugs segment, because this isn't what we usually do here, but I'm glad that we know now. Coming up, your moment of duh. Botanists in West Sussex, England, were given the task of protecting one of Britain's rarest trees. It is a southern beech tree, Heidi. They are today's moment of duh because... Somebody stole the tree. <laughs> There's only one? The tree was being monitored to see the interaction between its roots and the soil. And it's going to probably die because of damage caused to the roots and lack of care needed to make it grow. If caught, the thieves will be charged with, among other things, leaving the scene of a crime. But uh, they stole a tree, a southern beech tree, and it's a really rare tree and they were doing this, you know, really important study based on this type of soil and this type of tree. And they show up one day to check on the tree and it was just gone. Hmm. Maybe they should have put a sign there saying, hey, this is a really important tree. Don't take it. <laughs> I'm not sure what they were supposed to well, do. I don't know who would take a tree anyway. I don't know. Who steals trees? Uh, tree thieves, apparently. I'm not sure. Coming up, we have your scoop of the day. That is on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now, your Scoop of the Day. Doctor finds cockroach in teen's ear. Okay, that's disgusting. Yeah, this happened in China. They became exterminators as well as doctors when a 17-year-old said, I woke up during the night. Oh. To a scratchy sound. Oh my gosh, how Sounds awful. like it's in my ear. Doctors were shocked to discover a small cockroach oh. that was living in her oh ear. Oh my gosh. So they evicted said cockroach. I'm not exactly sure. How do you get that? How do you get a cockroach out of your brain? Oh. It doesn't make any... doesn't sound like a good way to start the day, does it? Hey, sorry for doing this to you on a Monday. Coming up over here, uh, a new movie. This I just don't understand. After Angry Birds... Mm. earned more than $300 million at the box office. I don't get that either. It was only a matter of time before other studios would jump on the bandwagon to adapt mobile games. Guess which one is the next one? This came out last week, so some of you probably already beat me to the punch. No, Fruit Ninja. Oh. The mobile game lets (laughs) users slice fruit in half with a swipe of their finger. The plot will, quote, revolve around a team of misfits who are recruited to become fruit ninjas in order to save the world. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) It's probably going to win an Oscar. (laughs) Here's the thing I got to say about fruit ninja. 
I watched a program. I don't know if this is still on, but there was a program called How I Made My Millions. It was on like CNBC or something. I was flipping through one day, and there was somebody on there that that uh, I had seen on another program, and I was like, oh, what's this about? It was a fascinating show. The dude that invented Fruit Ninja was on that show. You know why? Why? He became a millionaire in like two months. He created this game living at home in his mom and dad's basement, uploaded the thing, and then became a multimillionaire. And he paid off his mom and dad's house. And I'm like, well, it's kind of your house now, isn't it? But he still, at the time of that interview, still lived in his parents' basement. And the guy was worth, at that time, is worth like, you know, $50 million or whatever. Wow. So, because people like cutting up fruit on their digital devices, apparently. So now he's going to have a movie as well. Fruit Ninja, the movie. I just, I don't know. I don't wow. know how that's going to go. Motorists who use cell phones while driving are more likely to engage in additional dangerous behaviors like speeding, driving drowsy, driving without a safety belt, and sending texts or emails, according to a survey conducted by the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety. Additionally, more than two thirds, about 69% of licensed drivers, reported talking on a cell phone while driving within the last month. Despite the fact that nearly 9 in 10 respondents, 89%, believe other drivers using their cell phones are a threat to their personal safety. So it's kind of like, hey, I'm okay at it, but those guys are not. Hmm. So there you go. Two studies recently showed Facebook can make you feel socially isolated and miserable because you're seeing your phone, your friends have all these happy pictures. Oh, they're on vacation again. Look at all the fun stuff they get to do. I do get that envy because we haven't been on a vacation. We haven't. Long time. Oh, my gosh. And, and there are some things that we've done that, you know, I guess it counts as a vacation to others because they're like, well, you guys were just doing this or you're just doing that. I'm like, yeah, it was That's for not work. A vacation. It's not a vacation. No. But, and uh, it's one... always to the same place. We haven't been on a vacation. <laughs> we haven't. Uh, one in three people feel worse after visiting their Facebook page because of their general dissatisfaction with life going down. Positive images of friends enjoying holidays, which we call vacations, uh, commenting on their happy lives, or simply posting pet pictures were enough to trigger feelings of jealousy. I have two friends in particular, and I'm going to go ahead and call them out right now on the radio. Georgina. She's always doing Every awesome stuff. other day. She's in another country. She she's lives, enjoying she lives in vacation. England. She's having a wonderful time. On and, holiday. And Vicky. Yeah, our friend Vicky. Vicky is She's never home. Like, what is <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? What do you I haven't have, had a vacation. What do you for- have, like 17 <laughs> weeks of vacation each year? Yeah, she is always doing something. Vicky, we love you. I, know. I said to her one time, I saw she was someplace else again. I said, are you ever at home? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of hers is work-related too, though. But uh, Vicky, we know you listen. We know you. you. You know we love you, right? One last thing. A recent report shows the number of full-time journalists on Capitol Hill is down 40% since 2003. It seems like all we talk about now is politics, but there's 40% fewer journalists there? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Hmm. All right, this has been your Scoop of the Day. Dr. Bill Miller coming up in a bit. Election Day is almost here. No matter which side you're rooting for, you now have a place to get informed and to truly voice your opinion at politicalstorm.com. An amazing resource with information from people on both sides of the aisle all in one place. Watch videos, read blogs, listen to podcasts like mine, and read fun editorials. You can also contribute with your own blog for free. Be a part of the community at politicalstorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice, too, at politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We've got a special guest joining us today. We have Dr. Bill Miller. He's the author of a book called The Microcosm Within, Evolution and Extinction in the Whole Genome. Did I say that right, Dr. Miller? Absolutely correct. Terrific. See, I, I, I asked ahead of time, and then I was just hoping, I had my fingers crossed that I'd get it right. No, you, you hit the mark. It was great. <laughs> well, the, the good news is uh, we're going to chat today about something that everyone has probably heard of, and there's a lot of people that probably know some people that are doing this, but when we, we start this time of year as we're getting to the flu shot season, kids just went back to school, kids getting their shots, there are some people that are like anti-vaccination. They're so against that, and uh, we're going to kind of chat a little bit about that today. The anti-vaccination fad, is that has it been good or has that been bad overall? Well, I want to uh, start by saying that... Uh, there's uh, the, the internet is loaded with rumors that there are substantial concerns with vaccination, and uh, and there are bad side effects. I want to say uh, that this is untrue, except for one very important and bad side effect. 
Okay. And that bad side effect is the unexpected success of vaccines. Oh. Here's exactly what I mean. Vaccination is one of the, arguably, the single greatest achievement of mankind in its fight for survival. When we watch the you know, history, we read history, we're taught history in school, mostly it's about armed conflict. It's about uh, spears and, and bows and arrows and guns. But the real narrative of human drama, whether people concentrate on it or not, is our consistent struggle against infectious disease. We, we, are, uh, we exist as the survivors of a series of sweeping epidemics that have killed tens of millions of people at a time. Vaccination is, is our best means of protecting the, our, the population against a variety of, of incredible scourges like smallpox, like measles. We'll talk about this in a second. Because we have been so successful in treating these horrible diseases with vaccination, people have become uh, complacent and forgetful exactly how terrible these diseases could be. And because of that, they now are suffering from a treatment complication. They have amnesia. They have a medical diagnosis. They have amnesia of the reasons why vaccination was important. They become complacent instead, and it's... It, and we've, we've got to treat this unexpected complication now by better education so that people understand the value of vaccination and why these rumors about the, uh, the, the negative effects of vaccination links to autism that are purported are absolutely incorrect. Now, one of the things that I'll say is anybody that wants to can put anything they want to on the Internet, but that doesn't make it true. So when people go online and they read statistics, and they just assume that it's true because, quote-unquote, it was on the Internet. Well, that doesn't mean it's true. So when they're going on, they're finding this junk science. They're finding these things that are not absolutely verified. It's really more of somebody's opinion. It can do more damage than good. And I'm reading here that between the years 2006 and 2013, the percentage of pediatricians who had encountered a parent refusing a vaccine went from around 75% up to 87%. And I believe a lot of that had to do with people finding info online that, quote-unquote, told them vaccines were bad. Well, let's go directly to that. Uh, exactly. This is really important, John. Um, there's been a lot of pushback by parents against what uh, called the NMR vaccine results mumps rubella, uh, which is one of the uh, imperative vaccinations that your child gets uh, and, and should be getting, absolutely. The reason that this all got started was a, an article in a very prestigious medical journal in England called The Lancet, big-time stuff in England, uh, by a researcher named Andrew Wakefield. And it, he, he and his colleagues, his team of colleagues, put together an article which showed a, a, a very likely link between, or at least the data tended to show a possible link between that vaccination and autism. There's only one problem with it. It was found out that all the data was a fraud. Oh. He was being paid, employed by lawyers that were suing vaccine manufacturers, and he had never disclosed it to, to his colleagues even. He had manipulated the data behind his, the, the, his other colleagues' back, and the Lancet retracted this, apologized for publishing it, and retracted it. And despite that, this is, the, this, this is believed to be the source of that rumor, uh, which has overlapped our society's changing notions of the spectrum. Aut autism is now called, called autism spectrum disorder. It's not one thing anymore. And you and I know, I mean, I'm, I, when I was growing up several thousand years ago, <laughs> no, we didn't talk about these things. things the, the symptoms were always there. But we just said, well, he's a, just, he's, it's a little strange. You know, he's, mm. an, odd, he's an oddball. You know, he, you know, Tommy's being Tommy. It's different today. We're, we are more sensitive. And so what constitutes genuine increase in diagnosis and what constitutes a change in awareness is very hard to pin down. Here's what we know for sure. There have been a very significant number of careful scientific studies, many, many, that have repeatedly shown no overlap between autism and vaccination. 
There is just none. There's no truth to it at this moment. There is not one shred of evidence of truth to it. It is only innuendo and rumor. There's also a similar thing going on with what's called the HPV vaccination. This is human papilloma virus. We know that this virus is linked to cervical cancer in women, uh, all pharyngeal. These are throat cancers uh, in, in women and men, uh, and anal cancer. So uh, the, these are largely sexually transmitted diseases. We know that worldwide, half a million cases of women will die of cervical cancer, or well, cases of cervical cancer will be diagnosed at least, and at least 250,000 people worldwide will die annually from HPV infections uh, and their consequences. We know that that vaccina a vaccination program would be effective against it because that's already been proved. And yet there are rumors uh, out there, despite very careful, what are called multivariate studies, careful studies, rumors that, it, that these vaccines are associated with fatigue, headaches, uh, premature uh, uh, ovarian failure, and even sudden death. And these, the, the scientific studies, John, don't show any of this. It's just the, the Internet is a wonderful thing, a powerful tool, a yeah. powerful tool for research. But it's the village gossip. Anybody can say anything, and it gets credence because it's there. And, and oh, here's the oddest thing, John. This is the thing that just gets your mind going crazy. We always associate um, uh, improperly, I think, that we say, well, people aren't educated, therefore they are uh, prone to do silly things. Well, vaccination denial is, is highest among some of those communities that have the most money. The Hollywood Corridor, Brentwood, Malibu, uh, these places, these, these are the, the zip codes where the, the greatest number of, place of, of parents giving uh, pediatricians a problem when they recommend the routine vaccinations that your child and that you need. Is it partially because that has become kind of a trendy thing in Hollywood, do you think? Yeah. Well, the, you know, having money and being educated in a conventional sense does not mean uh, uh, an overlap with with good science. We live in an era an era in which everybody loves a good conspiracy. We all do. I mean, oh, look, that's our human nature. I love a good conspiracy too. But as a scientist, when it comes to a certain set of decisions, show me the data. Show me the the, the peer reviewed scientific study, and then I, I, my opinion will be altered according to that science. The, the facts are that the the scientific studies show no relationship. The Internet just says what it wants to say. And it is true that there's a certain segment of the society that feels like they know more. They feel as though they have a, 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 a genuinely better uh, sense of, of reality than the science. And the reason is anecdote. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is an important point, John. This is true for all of us. And it's a particular problem in medicine. Uh, you, each of us tends to weigh very heavily a personal experience or something related to us from a, by a friend. Someone says, uh, oh, uh, uh, Judy was uh, having such trouble with her, her arthritis, and then she ate asparagus for six days in a row, and now she's fine. Oh, now we've got a cure. Well, that's not science. No. That's... that's Anecdote, and, and when we're dealing with something like autism, which has a regular frequency in the population, and that we're now more sensitive to and being more respectful and careful and constructive with respect. In fact, my daughter uh, works uh, as a, a, a behavioral therapist in, in, for autistic uh, young, uh, children. Um, you know, there's a, there are a lot of terrific people working hard to try to do better in that space, and our sensitivities as a society, fortunately, are much different. And so that's what that's overlap. That's how things overlap. That's how we've gotten where we are. Well, you've made me want to know more. I'm going to have to check out this book. Our guest right now, Dr. Bill Miller. The book is called The Microcosm Within, Evolution and Extinction in the Hologenome. Did I get it right again? Terrific. 
All right. Well, that's a good test. I, I, I remembered all the way through. Dr. Miller, it's been a lot of fun visiting with you. Where can we find a copy of the book? You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, at my publisher, Universal Publishers. And if your listeners are interested in learning more about science, uh, topics, biology, evolution, infectious disease, um, just I- interesting things uh, that uh, that about microbes and germs, uh, come to my Twitter feed, at BillMillerMD. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go check it out. Dr. Miller, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us. Thank you, John. It's been a privilege. Again, Dr. Bill Miller, and the book is called The Microcosm Within, Evolution and Extinction in the Whole Genome. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Are you ready for Duel? Kyle Dowling on guitar, Brett Gunderson on bass, Sam DeVito on drums, and frontman Duel Shape. Gotta keep rocking, gotta keep sucking, bringing it down like rain. Duel's new single just hit iTunes and it's selling fast. Get your copy now. Their first single, Supernova, is available now for less than a buck. Learn more and find a direct link to buy Supernova at facebook.com slash Duel Rocks. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Assuming Rudolph was in front, there are over 40,000 ways to arrange the other eight reindeer. Oh, that's super. Somebody sat down and figured that out. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Fun, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The fingerprints of koala bears are virtually indistinguishable of those of humans, so much so they could be confused at a crime scene. Really? So, yeah, if you, uh, you're you looking for an accomplice, maybe you get a koala bear. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Shakespeare was 46 when the King James Version of the Bible was written. In Psalms 46, the 46th word from the first word is shake, and the 46th word from the last word is spear. How cool is that? That is just kind of an interesting... <laughs> right. you, did I lose you somewhere along the way? Do you think way? that has something to do with the name? No, I just think that's really... <laughs> I just think it's really cool. And apparently, you don't. You, <laughs> that's a stretch. I'm sorry. I but... just think it's really cool. <laughs> Hey, and our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Only thing, I'm sorry, ab- only about a third of the episodes of Gilligan's Island are actually about the castaways trying to get off the island. So two thirds of the episodes are just them hanging out on the island, not what trying to. What else are we supposed to do? I don't know. I just think it's funny. They always had guest appearances. I'm like, why don't you just go home with them? Right, they're gonna leave. They're <laughs> not gonna be here next week. Just Phyllis go home Diller with could them. take you home, or the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> oh wait, that was Scooby Doo. All right, thanks for listening to a couple of fun facts on a Monday. Legally, we gotta have insurance. That's why getting the very best rate is paramount. I'm Jared Parsons. I founded the first national and virtual insurance agency. Until now, you were limited to the agents in your area. But what if the rates are better somewhere else? At Parsons, we shop around and we get you the best rate. It's that simple. Go to RadioInsuranceGuy.com. That's RadioInsuranceGuy.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. New research from the University of California at Irvine says if you smile enough and you see yourself doing it and you share it with friends and family, you may actually make yourself happier. In other words, what they're saying is taking selfies can actually have a positive effect on your well-being, Heidi. Mm. Reporting in the Journal of Psychology of Well-Being, the research team attract. 41 college students, and they tracked their moods for a week. The kids were divided into three groups. Those asked to take a selfie every day. Those asked to take a daily photo of something that normally makes them happy. And those asked to take a daily photo of something they thought somebody else would enjoy and send it to that person. By the end of the month, everyone reported improved moods, but the highest level of happiness came from those who were told to take selfies. They also became more confident while the people who photographed objects that made them happy became more appreciative and the people who took photos for others became calmer and more connected. Here's an idea. Why not do all three? Then you could be calmer and more connected and more confident and whatever the third one was. What was the third (laughs) one? Oh, happier. There you go. Confident, happy, calmer, and connected. I mean, why couldn't you do all of those? So take a photo of something that makes you smile. Take a photo of something you think would make other people smile and then do a selfie as well. My wife over here, Heidi, you're pretty good at sharing things that make other people smile every day on oh, Facebook. Yeah. I mean, I try to be. 
I'm sure it doesn't make everybody smile. But. Some of the stuff you share is is quite offensive. And I always think it's funny because <laughs> we'll have somebody that will reach out to be Heidi's friend on Facebook. And she'll ask me. She's like, I hey. All, I always have to first send a disclaimer. She's like, do I do I accept their friend request? Yeah. Do you think this person's going to find this stuff humorous? And I'm like, you know what? You are you. So be yeah. you. I always, out of courtesy to whoever is requesting a friend a friend request on Facebook, I send a little note first before I accept. Just I so say, you know. Just so you know, this is my page. This See, is who I am. Politically incorrect space. I'm not allowed to be this way on the radio, but this is who I am in real life. Oh, you, and, they know. And people you, who listen, you know, here's a funny thing. People who listen to you, they know exactly who you are on and off the radio. You I don't hide say, it. If you still want to be, if you still want me to accept it, let me know and I'll accept it. But this is right. fair warning. Coming up, we're going to talk about the scent of a child that is on the way. If you're a business owner or the person in charge of advertising, I have a special offer just for you. We're doing a jingle special this month. Did you know that when you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable? How would you like to be the name in your industry and have people sing in your song? We've worked with hundreds of small businesses to create their own musical image, and we want to help you too. Reach out right now, and we'll give you $500 off. Squeeze it into this year's budget and get results for years to come. Learn more and hear examples at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. John and Heidi. A couple from the UK have named all three of their children after perfumes. Parents Danny and Dominique Regan have an eight year old son named Klein, a 13 month old daughter, Angel, and a newborn baby girl, Dior. The couple insisted they didn't even realize the connection until just recently. Danny found it funny since they indeed have Calvin Klein and Christian Dior perfumes on hand and apparently at his mother's house. Her favorite scent is Angel. So mm. there you go. Um, I have a nephew that has uh, his first name, his middle name, and his last name all have something to do with meat. Yeah. I thought thought it was kind of funny. Uh, their last name is Braunschweig, which is like a, a German... Braunschweiger is, is like a German meat. Yes. And uh, his first name is Tyson, and there's like Tyson Fresh Meats. That's a, a company. And then his middle name is Dean, and there's like Dean... Jimmy Dean. Uh, Jimmy Dean. But there's also another like Dean Foods... So I just thought it was really kind of funny when he was born. I was like, it's like, meat, meat, meat. <laughs> so I love that kid. He cracks me up. He wants to be a weatherman. Did you know that? I did know that. I think that's really cool. He'll be a great weatherman. He'd be like a, a meaty weatherman. So <laughs> Coming up, we've got some more fun stuff on a Monday. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Kids, do not jump on the bed. You never know where you're going to land. Listen to this. This is crazy. An eight-year-old boy from Germany is fortunate to be alive after jumping on his bed and bouncing out the window. Oh, boy. Alexander and his sister Jennifer were just goofing around. They were supposed to be sleeping. But then they did this little contest of jumping from bed to bed. Well, Alexander, did he win? Oh, my gosh. Or did he lose because he jumped and then bounced right out the window? Fortunately, the younger... The younger sister... Or was the window open? I hope the window was open. uh, I think it was open. Fortunately, the young youngster landed in a bush outside of his grandparents' oh house. Gosh. There was a 15-foot fall, <gasps> and he escaped with minor injuries. So he's very, very oh fortunate. Oh, my gosh. It doesn't say how old. Oh, yeah, eight-year-old boy. It's it way must up have at the been top. a soft bush. Apparently. It must not have been a rose bush or anything. <laughs> oh, that would be awful. <laughs> That'd be right, probably worse than landing just like on cement. <laughs> so, please, just put me out of my misery. <laughs> no, so he jumped on the bed, out the window, and boom, into a bush. Coming up, we're going to talk about milk and soy milk and a lawsuit. It's on the way. John and Heidi. Election day is almost here. No matter which side you're rooting for, you now have a place to get informed and to truly voice your opinion at politicalstorm.com. An amazing resource with information from people on both sides of the aisle all in one place. Watch videos, read blogs, listen to podcasts like mine, and read fun editorials. You can also contribute with your own blog for free. Be a part of the community at politicalstorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice, too, at politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Never thought of this before, but it does make sense. A dairy trade association says the term soy milk is misleading and makers of soy-based drinks need to stop using it. The Arlington, Virginia-based National Milk Producers Federation is calling on the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to restrict the use of the word milk, saying federal regulations limit that term to the stuff that comes from dairy cows. The Dairies Group Initiative caught the American <laughs> Soybean Association <laughs> by surprise. Group initiative. What? Did I say it wrong? <laughs> no, I just think it's funny that a group like that has to exist. Well, they have to, and this is why. 
Uh, oh, the ASA God. spokesperson, Bob Callahan, wonders whether the dairy group would seek similar restrictions of such products as goat milk and coconut milk, because that's the actual term. Soy milk is a made-up thing, so the soybean producers are saying, okay, you're just tackling us. What about these other milks? You're saying if it doesn't come out of a cow, it's not milk. What about goat milk? What about coconut milk? It is milk if it what comes out of a What about Milky goat? Ways but and milk coconut, does. coconut isn't necessarily <laughs> milk. So but, they would have to go after the coconut people, but a goat, but it's that is called, milk. But it's called coconut milk. That's what it's called, the stuff that's inside of a coconut. And if you squeeze its little udders, it comes right out the bottom. Uh-huh. That's where it comes from. That's, yeah. how, you get, that's how you get coconut milk. I'm not milk. stupid. Are you sure? Uh-huh. So you didn't fall for that? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Always. Always lose because she's too smart for me. All right. Coming up, we've got some good news. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. Now some good news. We always try to end this program with a little bit of good news. And James Henry Smith was a zealous Pittsburgh Steelers fan, Heidi, in life and even in death. And that could not keep him from his favorite sport in a recliner in front of a TV showing his beloved team in action. The 55-year-old Smith of Pittsburgh passed away from prostate cancer Because his death was unexpected, his family was able to plan for an unusual viewing. Uh, It was not unexpected, rather, I should say, because that didn't make sense otherwise. Uh, They they knew this was coming, so they planned for this. The funeral home erected a small stage in a viewing room Uh and arranged furniture on it, much as uh, Smith would have maybe had things set up at home on game day on Sundays. His body was in a recliner, his feet crossed, and a remote in his hand. He wore black and gold silk pajamas, slippers, and a robe. A pack of cigarettes were tucked in, uh, and he had a beer at his side, and he had a high-definition TV playing a continuous loop of Steeler's highlights. His burial plans were a little more traditional. He'll be laid to rest in a casket. So, But I think that is just a cool thing that in life and in death, this guy gets to be a fan. He gets to you know do what he wants to do. So, you know, we, we've got a, a big fan of the Chicago Bears in our family. Uh, Tuesdays with Charlie, if you listen to that, tomorrow... Uh, Charlie is a huge Bears fan. Yeah. So you're, you're sitting over there looking a little This to me is disturbing. But, I, but I wouldn't want this. You don't think that's how Charlie would want to be laid to rest? No. I I, th- I think that he... I, I don't think he would like that at all. I think he would. We should we'll ask him. We'll have to ask him when there we, we talk to him. I don't think he would like... Th- I, I, I just... I don't know. To me, that's disturbing. I think it would be very disturbing for all the people there to see that. I just think it's... I don't know. Well, the reason <laughs> I don't know it's disturbing to me. The reason I put this as our good news is because I think it's really good news that this guy got what he wanted. This is what he wanted. I think that it's great that you're allowed to do whatever your final wishes are. That's important. And yeah. if th- that was their final wishes, that's fantastic. I and I really so. hope they talked it over with this guy. Well, I'm sure they did. <laughs> well, we got to ask your dad <laughs> tomorrow. Find out what he wants. Yeah, so. that's just, I don't know. To me, that's just disturbing. All right. Well, time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show on a Monday.